Guys. We went to Tim Hortons and there were all these uh, super rad old men with uh, Harley Davidson hats and like Harley Davidson jackets. I like stuff like that. I like it because it makes me think of like how I want to be super kick ass when I'm like really old. You know? I'm gonna be pretty awesome when I'm old. No, but uh, I mean, like when you see like those old dudes and you're like, yeah, man, you're fucking rad forever. Like, you're not like, uh, I got to a certain age where I was like, I'm not kidding myself anymore, you know? You're like, where's your kids, man? Where's your fucking face, man? Yeah, we're starting the, uh, starting the new record, and, uh, been pretty busy. Didn't get any laundry done. Just talking about how I'm three days deep on, uh, St. Fair. Pretty rough. Didn't shower this morning. You can't sing about grimy brutality without immersing yourself in the subject matter. What's up? It's first day of... Recording here at Metalwork. We're doing the drums here. It's a legendary studio owned by Gil, the drummer of Triumph. Canadian legendary metal band. Come check it out. In 2004, Scott and I decided to start this band. He and I had known each other for a super long time, um, just from like hardcore and stuff. On a whim, Liam and I had always talked about being in bands, and then one day he was, you know, wasn't doing a band anymore and was really serious about starting one. I was like, you know what, let's do it. There wasn't a lot of bands like playing what we kind of thought, like, what we kind of wanted to hear, I guess, is the way we looked at it. I guess like the idea was like just like combining a bunch of like all of our favorite types of music, but it wasn't like specifically metalcore or you know hardcore or whatever. So for us, like we were looking at bands like you know there's bands like Cursed and Mia More, and I mean this one Every Time I Die had put out like Hot Damn, but also like the Bronx had just put out like their first record. Um, These Arms Are Snakes had just put out that uh, This Is Meant to Hurt You EP. So I think that was like a lot of stuff that was like going on that was like really cool at the time. So Scott and I were just like, you know, kind of coming up with all these ideas. We were like, we'll just do it. And kind of in the same way that we've done everything, we were just like, we'll just start this band and we'll just figure it out. And I can play drums and Scott play guitar. From day one, uh, Liam and I have written a lot of the songs together and we've always kind of had that dynamic, whether it was him just kind of throwing lyrical ideas at me and me trying to play guitar riffs on top of that or him sitting behind a drum kit. The first song we ever wrote was Blood Pact, which like came out on the demo, and then uh, we wrote Raging Hard, and then Shillelagh. Basically that's when like Mikey came along, and it was like, he was somebody that I knew and really got along with and thought he had a good vibe. And then I had heard like, you know, those old figure four demos that he was on. So I was like, okay, wicked, like this guy's rad. And I just like got him to move to Toronto, like immediately. I joined Cancer Bats in 2005, I was living in Winnipeg. Four years later, here I am. Everybody knows that I'm not coming back to Winnipeg. That was insane. I love it. Look at our take four notes. <laughs> Like everything. It rules. There's some, I did some cool shit in that. You did some really cool amazing, shit. Amazing, amazing stuff. But take four, classic yeah. fucking Peters. Eric Ratz and Kenny Long. Like, just like, the fact that now we're on our third record, like, hanging out with those dudes. And just like, it's the best time. We'll basically just like, make this as badass as Welcome to Jamrock. Exactly. And then, you'll fucking toast over it too. Oh, yeah. Cancer Bats Pretty versus good. Solar Rosa, man. That'd be fucking it's insane. Uh, and I'd be like, nine, nine, and I, gone done wicked and drawed and tried his run. You wanna get this? Nothing coming back. 
Yeah. Kenny's actually younger than everyone in the band. <laughs> but yeah. none of us knew that. Only by a year. This this business ages you by five years. Basically. I'm really I'm really twenty two. <laughs> is Ray Rats is even younger than me. Yeah. You look all sketchy and worn out though with your beard. <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm kind of running the ship here. Kenny, I'm just sort of bringing along for like uh, ethnic, ethnic diversity. Um, you know, he's he's a young guy, and I'm kind of like, you know, trying to show him the way of the music business and everything. So I'm kind of the boss around here. Everyone like asks me questions and like, hey rats, what do you think? Hey rats, you have the final say on this. And I don't know. It's uh, I'm kind of the boss. I have rats on just as like a, a pity credit, just so we could. You know, get his name down as a producer. He's actually learning a lot of stuff from me. Losing his uh, his headphones last night, so he decided to duct tape them to his head. He has a duct tape headband. Duct tape headphones. Was he playing he that? Play that yeah. Perfect. He was playing that amazing. Yeah. Fucking Peters. You got another Classic one of those in you? fucking Peters, man, right there. Classic yeah, let's do that Peters. again. We've worked that on three good. records now with uh, Rats and Kenny, and I've been uh, classic Peter since day one, I think. We're primarily using rides on this record, actually, which I think is I like a little bit of a faux pas, maybe, in recording sometimes. But you know what? We're not like a... Not when you're in the cancer bats. Not when you're in the cancer bats. <laughs> that is ugly. That is one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> Horrid. Is that a winner? Winning combo. Well, yeah. we'll do a couple of runs. Oh, oh, oh. See, that's higher, and let's see uh, this guy here. Perfect accent. It was hard playing so light on the cymbals, I like dropped the stick at one point. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah, you'll get used to it. Because I'm just trying to be like so gentle. Be gentle, Michael. Be gentle. Which, which I'm not one, a gentle which person. That? Um, mean machine, you know? We've been drinking a lot of water. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking one of these today, and I think I peed it out like three times. The whole thing? See, because I've been refilling yours with toilet water. <laughs> <laughs> all, comes, all comes from the same source, baby. Exactly. Every time it gets down to about here, I go to the toilet, scoop it up in the old. No, no, I would never. I would never piss it. I piss in the toilet first, then. Fill it off. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. It's, it's at least like. Yeah, There's it's no dip, touch. No dip. Oh, dude, I'd never do that to you, man. I'd never. I'd never dip my rim. I'd never rim you. <laughs> I love my Peter. Oh, look, look at these bears. Bear love. <laughs> it's just big man. Big man. Big man. Big man. Big man. No edits. <laughs> no edits. This is the cover of the DVD right there. <laughs> it came up to the point where. Mike's drum set was sounding really yeah. good for like, kind of, like, kind of the slow bit. songs, yeah. like all the big you know doomy we're, stuff we're, that was really like, shit, so you know, bringing out kick and bringing out snare. Just Since we have this really good drum sound, we'll just focus on all the slow songs that we use this for, and then we'll build another kit to play all the fast songs on. And then when we play live, we'll have like three or four different drum sets that Michael sit down at. This is nerdy shit. Don't worry about it. If anyone's at home watching this and being like, fuck, I wish they had more about comping and about triggers, then you can call me. Give me a shout and we'll talk it out. 416-928. I'm going to make a, a mix-up, a sandwich mix-up. Impromptu sandwich. I'm stealing some hummus from Scope. I'm going to put it on this pizza bun. Scope will never know until he watches this. And then I take some tofurkey because oh. I don't eat real meat because I'm a fucking pussy. I'm gonna put this hot sauce on it that I got from one of the guys that work, is working on our record today, Dejan. Made this really wicked hot sauce himself. And it's pretty spicy, packs quite the kick. I put a little bit of that in there. You take it, you fold it in half. And it's like a taco. Yeah. One more song to do. It's a good one too. Save probably my favorite for last. 
Actually, it's, it's the last video. song. Oh, yes, we'll bring that shit back. I'm sad. Oh, You're sad? Like nine. <laughs> last oh, yeah. last, mind, last song of drums. Oh. You gotta do this five more times. You gotta do it all over again for the vocals, guitars, bass. We'll probably put something gay like hand claps in the songs or tambourine. What the fuck is going on? Who authorized all this percussion? Come by. How old were those shots? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're in glass too, you know? It's yeah. Don't Who's unplug the Neve or the. Or maybe it's plastic. It's plastic. There's probably oh, some yeah. plastic in our system, but you know what? Just Probably a lot of other shit in our system too. Yeah, what do you Okay, so where are we off to now? We're going to Vespa. We're going to Mix, man. Where's Vespa? It's in Rexdale, Ontario. Toronto's oldest communities. It's, uh, it's a little rough these days. But you know what? There's a great fucking recording studio there. And uh, we've made all our records there. So, we'll be saying screw it. I think the band was around for maybe a week or two weeks when I saw them, but it was quite intense and, you know, for a band being relatively new, had their shit together. Doing deals sometimes with people take months and it's drawn out, but I think we both had the same idea at the same time. Let's put something together and get this out. <laughs> Hilarious barbecue ever. Oh, there's a ton of girls. They don't even own tops. Got a finger. I think they're pretty well done. You might want to put some fucking cheese on that girl. Okay. Happy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Here's a burger, Mikey. Thanks, Jay. Awesome burger. Jay, best barbecue. Bar, best ever. barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> omega 3 and Omega 6. Hey, it's Omega, Omega, it's really nice. Horrible. Hey, Jay. Thanks a lot. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. What's going on? Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Hey. Hey, Jay. How are you doing? Hey. Hey, Jay. You got my bass. <laughs> what is that? You were way cuter in my dream. Hey, I'm gonna play bass. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here, you weirdo. Stuff started going like really, really well. We got taken out on tour with uh, Alexis on Fire for like three months, which was like the biggest leg up. 2007 came around and we were all broke. Like even though those tours went really well, like we didn't have any money whatsoever. So what we decided to do was just like tour for all of 2007. We don't want to like bum out all of our friends because we're living on their couches. You know, we don't have any money to live in an apartment, so we'll just book as much tour as we can. And then we came home and that's when we started writing um, Kill Destroyer. And that was just like crazy summer of like writing and touring. And then at the end of that, this is where I'm getting with my story, we finally got Jay to be in the band. I've, I've known them, I've known them. Like I've been into the band for a long time. I saw their first, saw them play their first like show when uh, Keep It Up was playing with Bane. Whoa. 
and in the Keep It Upset, uh, the Bats got up and did uh, a song. I, I want to say they did Shillelagh. It was again kind of like the same reason why we got Mikey in the band. It's like we needed someone to really step up and be like a solid bass player. And then Jay joined the band, and that's been the best thing ever. Jay. Suck it. You know, he was a guitar player before this, and we asked him to play bass, and he was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I knew when he was like, I'll do it, he wasn't just going to be like, whatever, it's bass, I wish I was playing guitar. You know, he was like, all right, let's 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 dominate this these four strings. We didn't have Jay on the last record. This is the first time we've ever done a Cancer Bats record with a bass player. Burlton. Yeah. I think it means like endless nightmare in Spanish or something. Now we're in the situation where we're writing songs with a bass player and immediately the second we come up with a riff we know if it's going to work with a drum beat and what it's going to sound like as a full band playing it as opposed to just me and my guitar you know with Mike playing drums or something and you hear everything as a whole so you know whether it's bullshit or not right away. Scott always did a really good job of playing the bass, but it was like, I guess he he never really had time to think about it ahead of ahead of going into recording, because he was so concentrated on what he was doing with guitars that he wanted that uh, bass was so secondary that uh, I don't think he really got to have you know a lot of fun with it. One of the most magnificent and glorious killers of the jungle. <laughs> the cancer bat. Is the cancer bat. <laughs> we should get you to do a David Attenborough impression on the record. <laughs> we should have it start like that. <laughs> We've all known each other for years, but uh, for like a really long time, but we never spent that much time with each other. The only guy I've probably spent that much time with was Liam, because uh, he used to come sometimes in roadie for some of my old bands. Like when we'd go on tour, he'd come ride in the van with us and hang out. So with him, I kind of knew what was going to happen, but... Yeah, getting with Scott and Mike, those guys already had like this close-knit family kind of thing going on already because they've been touring so relentlessly uh, together for years. So yeah, me coming into it was not, not really nervous, I just didn't really know what to expect. But uh, it's, been, it's been a breeze. It's just like, I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for it to go any better. We were going to Europe and you have to fill in those immigration cards and Jay was like uh, under occupation. We all put musician. Previous to me uh, touring with them, I was driving a forklift. And so when it said occupation, I wrote down forklift operator. And I was just like, this is the best. Like to me, I was just like, this rules because Jay is like, known him for a super long time. I think he's the best dude. He's like such like a hard working, like of course he's gonna put like forklift operator. Like he's proud of that, you know? <laughs> when we were coming up to customs, they looked at my car and they said, you're an idiot. You're a musician. You're not a, you're not a forklift driver anymore. Like this is what you do now for a job. Jay really brings a new dynamic to the band. Yeah. Even live, like you know, watching them live and stuff like that. They're just, he just kicks ass, man. Scott and I really like work on the guitar and bass dynamics together. Just makes it a little more interesting. You know, you don't always have to be following along exactly with what the guitars are doing. Scott and I are like really into like really, you know, just experimenting with the guitar tones and how they, the bass tones sit with that and try a lot of pedals out and stuff. Make everything sound real dirty. Like I want, I want people to go running fucking scared when they hear the bass tone. <laughs> this is my distortion, one of my distortion pedals, my fuzz pedal, the Attack Goat, which is made actually here in Toronto, which is awesome because it makes it very accessible and not very expensive. Kenny's probably, uh, the smartest guy I've ever seen use Pro Tools. He's so fast and, you know, even if you, even if you do mess up and you're like, I could do that again, he's like, man, nah. sometimes he's like, nah, don't worry about it. I can make it, I can make it work. He's a good, they're, they're both great dudes. I like those guys. About the superstition. About what? About uh, having other things plugged in when you're not using it. Oh, okay. Because it's going through the electronics and if we don't want it's killing really, the signal. You know, like, it's like electronics that we don't really need in the sound. I don't know. We don't need we don't need Mark Tremonte of Creed. of Creed on this song. It's uh, also good too. We didn't bring any didn't bring any guest vocalist on this record. Uh, we pretty much got Jay to do all the. Uh, well, actually, no, we did have one guest vocalist. We had uh, the dude from MTV <laughs> did uh, some vocals with Scobie. Johnny Hawkins. Science. Yeah, but Jay took care of most of the. Uh, 
background parts and some of the parts to uh, just help uh, support uh, Liam's vocal. So yeah, once again, amazing Jay, you rule. Shut up and listen! Write a book of excuses! Time to wake up! Good job, Jay. Good job, Jay. Awesome, man. Yeah, dude, that sounds fucking wicked. Yeah, that sounds awesome. really, really good. I guess the answer, Mikey, is not very long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, Mikey's like, have you ever screamed in the studio before? I was like, not really. He's like, so how does your voice hold up? I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so people call me a nihilist. Say I don't believe in this the is probably, probably my all-time favorite record ever. Black Sabbath's first record, their self-titled one. This actually belonged to my mom. And... Uh, when I was like seven years old, I can remember uh, going through her record collection and picking this out and putting it on a record player and just staring at this witch and it creeping the fuck out of me. Uh, this Chet Atkins record belonged to my granddad and he gave it to me when I was really young. And uh, for anybody that doesn't know who Chet Atkins is, he's like probably the greatest, one of the greatest guitar players of all time. He's uh, like finger picking guitar players. Um, and so he gave this to me when I was really young and was just like, you need to learn how to play like that. And for years I didn't give a shit because I was like, no, I just want to play rock and roll music. And then I got to, I don't know, I got a little older and pulled it out and started listening to it. And yeah, Chad Atkins is incredible. And it's from my granddad too. So that was kind of, kind of a sentimental thing. Are you just one building show. me? I love you. I love you. <laughs> we're currently making a film. You know? Oh, you're making a movie? Yeah. Well, we're making a record at in Rexdale. Oh. Um, okay. At a studio in Rexdale. Yeah, they're in a band. Which band? It's called Cancer Bats. Cancer Bats? Who's the singers? Any singers? He's not here. Uh, I'm the drummer. What kind of is it? Heavy. Music? Heavy metal? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. You like it? I like it. I really do. Yeah. You ever go to karaoke place? Uh, <laughs> sometimes. Have a good day. That lovely woman made me a pizza. What's this? We're buying some packing bags. Uh, we could have a picnic on them. We could also cover up while uh, women need to paint or when we're moving. But you can also make guitar sound fucking bitchin', so. Yeah. I mean? The shit I do for guitars. Oh, look at Peter's over there. He's asking Buddy for duct tape. There he is. Hey, what's up, guys? Why don't you come inside and check out my house? Uh, you guys are at my house. I, uh, I live in a Winnebago, and um, I don't know, I customize it myself. You know, couch, sofa, come chill out here. Gets a little cold in the wintertime. I mean, you know, up in Canada, so I threw a, a wood-burning stove in here. You know, I got my little pile of wood. Sometimes I go cut it. Left over from our pneumonia hawk video. This is Jerry the Beaver, and uh, he kind of keeps watch on the place. People are kind of scared of him because he has horns. I think he's some sort of... Uh, heavy metal jackalope beaver hybrid thing, but uh, he's my buddy, and uh, I love him a lot. This is my old tube record player, love it. All the classics, all the time. Got a bit of records hanging out. I'm listening to a little volume four right now. Ozzy, touching. He, uh, you know, sometimes just gets you right here. This is, uh, this is where I sleep. It's kind of a pull-out bed. It's comfy. You know, room for one, maybe two, who knows? Filippo Garbanzo, FG right there, he, uh, he gave this to me uh, after a show we played in uh, Madrid, Spain. It's kind of calming. Let's me know uh, I can tame that inner beast. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
settled my bass lines. And now Scott's just kind of like, he spent most of the day today just getting his tones and stuff like that, finding out which amps he's gonna use. And he's gonna probably do that for the next week to two weeks, I guess. This is what I spend most of my time do doing. Yeah. More tuning than playing. It's one of those things people's, people don't realize. Exactly. When you're uh, the only guitar player in the band, you have to play every song two, maybe three, three four times. Yeah. And, uh, is that why guitar takes the longest? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think maybe what we should try and do is the mid cut function turn it more or, clockwise. Is that the intensity? Or so level? put some mids back. The, the intensity. Put no. some mids back. Oh, take, no. some take, mids some, out. take some mids a, out. A little bit. When you listen to it, when you hear it, there's this ooh, like that kind of sound. It's that, again that I call it a woodiness, but it's almost like it's almost like when I mean you know when you take a fucking graphic EQ and mm -hmm. you can hear the ooh, you hear that like you know almost like a wah pedal. It's like this nasally. Kind of sound. So far, we've heard him describe the tone as too woody, too woolly. I'm really not sure what that means, and too woofy, which I I get that one. I'm not sure. See, that's the thing. The but rip in it to yeah. me sounds really good. Yeah. Like also when you, when you added some of that sizzle, yep. I was like, okay, that's getting closer. Now it's so. That, so that's what I'm asking. Do we maybe trim out a little bit of like 180 or something out of the sound? Like even just doing that take, yeah, that felt a lot better. that woody woofiness or whatever that yeah. I was hearing, that wooliness you called it, yeah. that's probably a better thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a lot more subdued, and so it's the presence and the attack of the mid range is still there, but yeah. it's not this blanket over everything, you know. I also ducked a little bit of the sixty we were at. Yeah, on the cab. Well, no, just on the on, on the Neve on our bus. Yeah, just pulled that back a bit. You know what? This beard is fucking driving me crazy, man. <laughs> but it looks great. Really? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll keep it. Though. I kind of like it. So uh, yesterday was my twenty eighth birthday. So uh, yeah, we've all gone out to uh, celebrate, and it also happened to be the last day of tracking for the record. We came to Sneaky D's to get some amazing brunch. I had the bro. Favorito, fantastic. Jay has a bib. <laughs> got a white shirt on. Oh, really? Let's stay clean. For Scotty's birthday? Yeah. Burrow. I had the burro Favorito with no meat. Because meat's for losers. Thanks, buddy. What'd you have, Greg? <laughs> I had burro with me. This is the sound. This is Skull's sound right here. This is what I am. There you have it, kids. That's his secret. Right here. Bender see, Pro see Junior. this? See it? See all these amps? That's just for the sponsors. Yeah, that's just for show. That's just to make endorsers happy. Yeah. Uh, I actually just throw a tube screamer in front of this Fender uh, Blues Junior. Yeah. And, Pro uh, Junior. Pro Junior. Yeah. Sorry. There used to be this guitar store near my house when I was a kid that me and my buddy used to bike to, and they had the Wayne's World like white Stratocaster, oh, that's awesome. and it actually like on the back the like the like the bolt on like neck plate yeah. said like Wayne Stock oh, on it, way. like from Wayne's World Two. I really wanted it, but I didn't buy it, thankfully. That's badass. You screwed up, Scope. Could have been that you could you could be tracking with that fucking guitar right now. Yeah, yeah. right. So. You could be dating like Pia yeah, Carrera. I could be dating. Yeah. <laughs> Gear and they really wanted me to start, but I didn't have any money or anything like that. So they all kind of pitched in and like put this bike together for me out of like old parts and like parts of people like donated the crank and like carbon fiber fork. Um, and there was like an old set of wheels that they bought off somebody. And this is like an old like 80s like ground frame that my friend put together. So they basically made me this like amazing bike out of like scrap parts. It was like a total surprise for me when I came home and I was just like. So, so doing that. And then my girlfriend bought me a brand new set of wheels for my birthday, so this is like tons of love. And this bike. 
and it's definitely the best thing in the world. And then Maddie, my roommate's boot collection. He's got a lot of man boots. I'm still in the whole kit shoe. People might know him from like the uh, video blogs or like he's been in a lot of our music videos and stuff. And he's definitely like our best friend. But what a lot of people don't know is that, aw, he can cook. <laughs> Maddie's like one of the, like, I think, best chefs in the entire world. Um, he's definitely like opening up um, kind of like another side of like Toronto as like a young, like amazing chef. And he's getting like tons of really cool press. So it's wicked that, I don't know, right now, like one of my best friends is totally killing it and blowing up. And there in the background, there's Scoby's house. And Scoby lives behind his restaurant. Trish lives here too. I shouldn't forget that. Trish is definitely the best. Buys tons of groceries. And uh, yeah, when we were coming home from the tour, we were going to write the record. I was just like, ooh, I don't have a place to live. Because um, I was living with my girlfriend before, and she moved to Ottawa for work. And then we just went on tour for six months. So I never dealt with it. And then uh, when we were coming back to write the record, I was just like, um, can I stay with you guys? And originally it was just like computer and kind of like their junk room. And then Trisha was the best. And when she heard I needed a place to live, she totally like cleaned up all the stuff and like they threw away a ton of junk to make like a little corner for me. And then since then I've kind of like made it more my own. Somehow this is a straight edge band, but it looks like they're on heavy hallucinogens. Uh, Val Kilmer, who's uh, like a street, he did a lot of wheat bass with these heads all over town. And um, it was kind of around the same time we were doing all the like cancer bats wheat bass. So that's how I got to know him, because we were throwing up bats. Kind of around all the same spots that he was putting up uh, Val Kilmer heads. So it was super cool. I was just like, uh, I heard you're Val Kilmer. And he was like, yeah, okay. And I was like, I'm that guy who puts up all those bats. And he was like, oh. And he had put a Val Kilmer head over top of one of our big, like, uh, five foot bats. And so I was just like, what's the deal, you know? Not like real beef, but just like, kind of like, do you hate us? And he was like, no, I was just saying that, like, Val Kilmer was the original Batman. So I thought we, you know, it made sense that we were together. And I was like, that rules. These are my two notebooks that I basically wrote the whole record uh, in. Um, this is also the first, this is the first record that I haven't had uh, all of my lyrics stolen. Um, Birthing the Giant, I had my bag stolen. I had my bag stolen twice on Birthing the Giant uh, by two separate, I don't know, crackheads, I guess. And this is in 2005. That was the last time I worked a job, too. Fuck that. And then we got uh, broken into in, uh, in 2008. We had our van broken into before Hail the Shark came out. And I mean, I finished writing the lyrics, but uh, my bag got stolen that had my notebook in it. And so all the lyrics from Hail Destroyer got stolen as well. So these are the only two uh, things of like Cancer Rats lyrics that still exist. We had like written all the songs, so I actually broke up the book into like sections. So I was like always referring back to like, I had like my own index of like, okay, you know, I know the title of this song or I know that this song is this. So I like, you know, broke everything up, you know, just like trying to like write songs and rewrite songs and make sure everything worked. I kind of like the, uh, I've realized the cardboard thing too is good because I never want to like say too much. I have like a piece like this where obviously like I have too many words to like fit on one page type of thing. So then I pared it down to this. It's kind of like one of those early indications that's like, oh, maybe I'm, maybe I don't need to say this much when the song's only three minutes long. No. No. This song sucks. No, no, it's just the old one. This is the new one. Just don't want to get mixed up on too many pieces of cardboard. <laughs> Some people use paper. I use cardboard. We use cardboard for everything. Yeah, yeah why use cardboard? Car we use cardboard for our set lists. We use cardboard for our big calendars. I like it though. I like when we play big festivals and someone's like, uh, Do you want me to print out your Yeah, do you guys list? have printouts of your set lists? And I'll hold up like a paper plate. Like, <laughs> I have three paper plates. Yeah. Basically, I sang over top of all of Mike's drum tracks. So now we're going through all of those vocal takes to see if there's any decent nuggets. 
So in some cases we're like, this kicks ass, cool. that had a great vibe. And in other cases we're like, this sucks so let's bad. Like, let's like everyone, no one ever hears this <laughs> let's, ever again. Let's re-sing the entire let's song in its entirety. Re-sing the entire song in its entirety? We should watch that. Dude, you are over the top. Okay. Yep. Just doing a little vocal take to a little singing of darkness. All right, rats, let me know how many you need, and we're good. We need 1,000 vocal takes. 1,000 takes. Uh, okay, yeah, I can do 1,000 takes. All right, here we go. All right, take number one. Oh, what the? Did that sound like a train? Okay, 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 here we go. Here we go. Okay. I'm not a train, I'm a man. Here we go, here we go. Did that sound like a sheep? Or a, or a goat? Again. You sound like a goat! <laughs> Again! Uh, wait. I can't, uh, I can't read, I can't read any of this. Wait, what? Uh, I I think I'm naked. Wait, Kenny. Right, I wear it in my clothes. Go. What? Again. Whoa. Was that a dinosaur? Uh, what's going on? Again. Again. I'm a man. Again. I'm a man. Why do I sound like this? Okay. Again. One more. Again. What are we at? Number 900? Oh, no more takes. <laughs> Again! <laughs> Make it stop! Again. Please, God! <laughs> what is Again. wrong with me? <laughs> hey, Liam. Liam, uh, Rats and Kenny need you for vocals, man. No. Uh, Every single line you should be able to like, like if the you know if the the chorus is like your main point, then every other line in the song should relate back to that, and it should always be like really clear. Because when you think about it, like I'm not gonna be in every kid's room or your car or whatever, being like, no, no, no. What I meant to say in this song was you know, was this, that it's about hating <laughs> the system. Compromise! Compromise yourself! <sighs> Chorus. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, wicked. Let's grab a few more. Oh yeah, hey. we're filming a DVD. <laughs> oh, dang. This is Joe, <laughs> our <laughs> account. Like, edit, 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 edit. edit. Debits must equal credits. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you get to yeah. a certain point in your life, you need to do your taxes. I haven't done my taxes since 2004 when I moved to Toronto. And I used, I basically used my tax return and the money I had to like live off of while we started the band. Because I was not working. But then, you know, it all paid off. Sometimes you gotta eat garbage for three years or four years to get what you want in life. As we get older, like all of us, I think it kind of comes to like a point where you get a little bit more like, kind of stuck in like what you're doing, you know? Like in a way that it's just like, okay, well you know what? Like I'm 30 at this point, or I'm gonna be 30 when this record comes out. Like this is my life. Like this is where I'm at right now. I think it's as you get like more confidence from being older and stuff like that, where you're just like, you know what? Fuck that. I don't want anything to do with what you have in your life. I've gotten to this point doing whatever I've wanted. You pay down your passions for financial gain! You missing the point you forgot in your name! And that's kind of like what I've realized a lot of the songs are about. Probably because I'm just old. Am I an asshole or just old? When did I get so jaded? Liam's gonna lay down all his vocals and then I'll throw some backups on there. We'll get some gang vocals, some hand claps, some tambourine. I'm figuring out what gangs we're gonna use. 
so we can be very efficient with our time with everyone. Because we're probably going to be breaking their balls and they're going to hate it. They're going to be like, hey, we came up here for fucking beer and fun. You guys are making us work. What's this timing shit and addiction? The fuck? These are gangs. No, if anything, that's why we asked uh, a bunch of singers. It's kind of insane. Oh, that was the last album. That's right. Yeah. So. Oh, sorry, guys. So we got lead singers of bands. Or, yeah, I guess all lead singers of bands. Or really good backup singers. Chris Cronk. Wade McNeil, uh, Angelo, and Bondi. That's it. Four really good guys. When I worked at the Goodfoot like warehouse, we'd see we kept seeing like these sketchy looking women around. And so we realized I'm like, that girl looks like a hooker. There's gotta be a rum and tug somewhere. I look next door, it's right next door. What is going on back there? It's uh time we roll. We were rubbing tug next to our uh, next to the r r recording studio. Yeah. That's by Rexdale, quality area. And then we'd see them in the paper in the Now magazine. We'd see the picture, I'd be like, I saw her in the store yesterday. It was like celebrity sightings, it was awesome. <laughs> celebrity <laughs> prostitute sightings. I get on the guard okay. now. Right? I'm going. Okay, cool. And then what else do you do? 427 I get on the 427 North. And then I have 401 East, and then I have to keep going on the 401 East, and then I'm in Pickering. 401 East, why would we go East? We wanted to go West. No, you want to go on the we would have needed North. To get, we would have needed to go West to get on the 401 North. No. And, what time no, it's East, we drive it every day. We take it every day. It's 10 o'clock, which means I can be here for 20 minutes. It's at 11, I need to be back downtown recording with the stereos. <laughs> Oh, let's so hit this. I wanted to. So, let's hit this. Um, also, I'd like to talk as long as I'm in the about how Mikey has changed. Uh, I don't know how good the record's going to be because I was watching this video of them in Japan the other day. There's Mikey playing the drums, sunglasses are on stage. Which one's the auto tune? How do I turn that off? So that's What's the guitars? Oh, it's on stun. It's on stun. It's on stun. Don't worry, auto tune. <laughs> I want to so sound like you're not. You're pain. Oh, we're all in this. Oh, you know what I listened to the, the other day is that the song from the This Is Hell thing. Your voice oh, sounds split. really weird, like deep. Not weird. It just doesn't sound like you. You don't agree with me on that one? Uh, uh, you're an idiot. I haven't heard it. <laughs> Hi. Fuck you, bitch. Hamlin's just reading your lyrics out. We're all making fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> We're all racist? Oh, we're all raised. Okay. I got it. Is this the song Good we're one. doing? Hey, Great, let's grand, do this. wonderful. Yo. Sorry, real oh. bad. <laughs> <laughs> you had it the, at the beginning, it was real good. Right. You had it. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> we are the undead! We are the undead! Whoop, now we're doing it. All my songs are about hate, and all yours are about dying. dying. Yeah, actually, a lot of the songs are about dying or not dying. <laughs> Dead wrong! Dead wrong! Big moment, doing the last song on the record. Skulls all the way. This means it's a, it's gonna be a wrap. This means it's going to be a wrap. This means we are done. Yeah. Woo! Finished. Excellent. What's your favorite song so far? Bleh, that's the worst. My favorite song on like Birthing the Giant is probably, I really like Diamond Mine a lot, but we never play it. And I think Bastards Watts on Hail Destroyer is my favorite song and is probably one of my favorite songs to play too. Album three. What's, uh, what's it gonna be? I think probably the song Ripper Dog is, is my favorite. Uh oh. There's about five I really like. I can't. You have to pick one. I have to pick one? I, I don't think I can. Ripper Dog. <laughs> Ripper Dog really and mine. Drive the Stake. Ripper Dog, Drive the Stake, Black Metal Bicycle, Alice, uh, Radiation. That's five, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, there we go. Ooh, you, you, you called it. You're like, dude, you're going to like Ripper Dog. It's my favorite song in the record. Yes, guy. Every song, I, I think there's some serious, you know, Hell Destroyer type songs on this record, maybe five or six of them, and, you know, we're going to destroy in this one. They're all good, man. I can't even pick. I, I don't know. I just can't pick. What songs do you leave off? 
like you can't have we can't have like a 16 song record you know so I'm like oh this stuff's tough Blech. so hopefully we'll figure that out I think we're gonna figure that out in a few days okay. well D-Beat starting the record I like that I, mean, I, I like think that's that. awesome I think uh, Ripper Dog being second. I love it. So, so. Singer being third. Yeah. Like, it is pretty front loaded, eh? Falcon Fortress last, I think, is cool. Yep, that's great. Um, but then, yeah, that's where we had a lot of trouble. Like, okay, what do we do with, like, what would Adam want? And I definitely moved Alice and Dust because I'm like, I want that song earlier because yeah. I think that song's awesome. Ultimately, it's going to be uh, how it sounds. How it all flows together. Yeah, right? that's what we were trying to think of too, like how drum endings are going into song beginnings. And going like slow song, fast song, kind of something else. I'm just going to load it into my iTunes and it'll play randomly anyway, so. It's all on that We were talking about a bunch of stuff too, like having Darkness last. Yeah, these are all our lists. Many, many lists. And that's where the scope plays guitar with himself. Very nice. Writing solos. What, what band does Lemmy play in? Uh, Motorhead. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> High five. That's awesome. Yeah, Motorhead is awesome. That's classic stuff. Would you want to be on our record? Yeah? I would love to have you on our record. I wish you were here when we were playing drums. That would have been awesome to have you play drums on our record. Because yeah. you're way better than our drummer. Next time, <laughs> I'm going to come quickly. Yeah. <laughs> this is your dad. Who's being too busy? Too busy? <laughs> Is the minivan too slow? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't have pillow fights. We, we have a lot of pillow fights. That's how we've been making this record. But we don't. No? Not at, not at your dad's studio? Because um, um, everybody don't likes pillow fights. Oh, right. Really? Everyone likes because he works with too many emo bands, I think. Yeah. All of those speakers are going to come blasting at you, but not too loud. We didn't bring headphones, right? No. We only no. bring that to Cancer Bat shows, right? <laughs> it's not going to hurt me. No, you're tough. No. Yeah. It's okay. It's because you ate your banana. You're super tough because you ate your banana, right? Yeah, I'm super it. tough from my banana. Oh, that's why it looks familiar. That's why we this. eat bananas. Yeah. And this did you notice? Song where you can, Eric wears camouflage really and so does your dad. Your dad. Yeah, really that's well. like a thing that all yeah. sound guys do. Uh, Uh, what happens basically is we print off uh, a CD from like the mix and then we come and listen to it in the van to make sure it sounds good in a shitty stereo. And our van is actually a perfect example of the shittiest stereo. So we know that, you know, at the lowest common denominator, it's still going to rule. It barely works, the van stereo. Well, yeah, we have to insert the CD. We have to insert the CD times. maybe uh, 15 to 20 to so a thousand it. times. Oh yeah, this is Adam Ott. He's one of our many uh, talented managers that are going to help us uh, achieve greatness on Cancer Rats 3. Three? Let's, come on, give him the real name. Really? Yeah. No. Oh, it's going to be called The Bear, The Mare, Scrappy and Bones. No. Scraps, Scraps and bear. Bones. <laughs> yeah. Bear, bear, Mare, Bear's Mare. Honestly, the record's going to be called Bear's Mare, Scraps and Bones. I like that. It came to me last night while I was asleep, listening to Smashing Pumpkins. So I'm the bear. Scobes the mayor, because he's the mayor of Scobe City, uh, which is a small town in northern Ontario uh, that Scobes actually the mayor of. <laughs> and uh, that's why we call him the Scobe, because he's the mayor of Scobe City. But uh, <laughs> is this a true story? <laughs> no, not at all. It just it came out of. Well, Scott, and then I don't know. Somehow it was Scooby, probably, and then Scopes, and then Scope City population of all Scrappy's scraps because uh, he uh, is uh, um, he used to eat a lot of table scraps. <laughs> 
we called Jade J Bone Malone. Um, when he joined the band, he was just J Bone, and then uh, that quickly transformed into J Bone Malone. There's no real reason behind the nickname, more that it just uh, rolls off the tongue so nicely. What do you think of the name, Adam? You can tell them if you're so. Want to be that? Well, no, why the it should be coming from you, not from me. I've said it a thousand times. Every segment, I go. This is the bass track for Cancer Bats 3, Bears, Mares, Scraps, and Bones. Uh, we're probably going to listen to one of the tracks. This is the fourth mix for Cancer Bats 3, Bears, Mares, Scraps, and Bones. What's the, what's the album called again? Um, oh, Adam, I see what you did, Adam. That's clever. Adam Mott is going to be looking for a new line of work. Sure. Soon. Mm-hmm. It's called Stabbed in the Neck in the Back of the Van. Yeah. <laughs> Hide called, the body it's called in, stabbed it's called in the watch back, back of the body and record behind you. Yeah. Why did you do that? Well, because I don't want to go to jail. Wait, what? I don't think we're ever going to be one of those bands that just like blows up, you know? And I, I almost like don't want to be because I think we wouldn't appreciate everything that we had to go through to like get to this point. Every tour that we do is like, it's just. It's not like, oh, well, last time you came here, there was 50 people, and now there's 500. It's like, last time we played, there was 100, and now there's 200. And then you come back, and there's like 300. And hopefully, we'll come back, and there's going to be 400 or 500. You know what I mean? And it's like, but you still know all those 100 people that came. And like, we still tour places where there's like these kids that are still coming to every show, and they're still like, kind of like growing along with us, which I think is rad. friends for years like I you know I've known Liam probably nine years now and you know we met going to shows and then same way pretty much around the same time I met Jay years ago and it's funny because you always talk about you know oh we should start this band and we'll call it this funny name and and you know it'll be like this and it'll be wicked and kids will be moshing but um, you know that actually happened with our band that's the difference (laughs) 